In a previous lesson, we proved that a line tangent to a circle at a point P is perpendicular to the radius that meets it at point P. I'll leave a link to that lesson in the description, but as it turns out, the converse of that result is also true. So if we have a line that intersects a circle at a point P, and instead of knowing that this is a point of tangency, we know that the radius meets it at a right angle, then that implies that the line is a tangent, which means it doesn't intersect the circle anywhere else. So that's what we're gonna prove today. We'll assume that our line intersects the circle perpendicular to the radius and use that information to prove that the line is tangent to the circle at that point. The result is also stated here. If a line intersects a circle at a point P so that the radius at P is perpendicular to the line, then the line is tangent to the circle. What that means to prove that our line L is tangent to the circle is to prove that P, where we are assuming it meets the circle, is the only point where the line meets the circle. That's what it would mean for L to be tangent to the circle at this point. It doesn't hit the circle anywhere else. This is in contrast, of course, to a secant of the circle that intersects it twice. And you can see how if we draw a radius from the center to a point where the secant meets the circle, well, that is not a right angle. But here, we've got a right angle. How do we prove that this is a tangent? Well, for the previous proof, we used a contradiction argument. So let's go ahead and try the same thing here. We're trying to prove that line L is a tangent line. So we'll suppose for contradiction that line L is not a tangent. By showing that this force is a contradiction, we'll prove that L must have been a tangent all along. Assuming for contradiction that the line isn't a tangent, that means it must meet the circle C at some point other than P, let's say Q. So perhaps there's this other point here that we'll call Q, which is on the circle and it's on the line. As we saw last time, doing contradiction proofs with geometry can be a little weird. Representing our assumption in a diagram is kind of awkward because we're trying to draw something that that actually can't be. But the idea here is that the line L is intersecting the circle at some point other than P, we're calling that Q, so these are the same point. Or if you preferred, we could draw the line as sort of curving back to the circle, something like that, but I'm just gonna stick with this. Now, what's almost always our most useful tool in geometry? That's right triangles. So let's draw one. Let's consider triangle CQP. So here's that triangle. And remember, even though it doesn't look it on our diagram, this point Q is the same as this point Q, since we're assuming the line meets the circle at this point Q. Why is that important? Well, because that means this is a radius of the circle. But of course, this other side of the triangle is also a radius of the circle. So we know that the sides CQ and CP are congruent. So that means we're looking at an isosceles triangle. Then by the isosceles triangle theorem, the angles opposite the congruent sides in an isosceles triangle are also congruent. This right angle is the angle opposite the side CQ, so this angle opposite CP has to be a right angle as well. So that means our triangle has two right angles. And that, my friends, is a contradiction. No triangle can have two right angles because the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. If just two of the angles are right, that means those two angles add to 180. And so once you throw in the third angle, that angle sum would be over 180. That's too big. A triangle can't have two right angles. Thus, our assumption that the line L is not a tangent must have been wrong. It's impossible for L to meet the circle at any point other than P because that would lead to this contradiction. And so we've proven that P is in fact the only point where the line L meets the circle C. And so 
L is a tangent line. And remember, we were able to assume these two sides are congruent because they are radii of the same circle. We assumed that Q was another point of intersection between L and the circle. Then we were able to conclude the opposite angles are congruent by the isosceles triangle theorem, telling us the angles opposite the congruent sides have to be congruent. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving the isosceles triangle theorem. It's pretty easy to prove. Just draw an isosceles triangle and then draw an angle bisector between the two congruent sides and then you'll be pretty much done once you apply the side angle side congruence postulate. As a little bonus, here's another way we could have proven that L is tangent to the circle. We would start the same, assuming for contradiction that L intersects the circle at some other point Q. Then we could conclude that segment CP is shorter than the new segment CQ because CP was assumed to be perpendicular to the line, and the perpendicular is always the shortest way to get from a point to a line. So the distance from C to any other point on the line would have to be longer. But then we would also know that CP is equal to CQ in length because they're both radii of the same circle. And there's your contradiction, proof done. So that's how you prove it. If a line intersects a circle at a point P, so that the radius at P is perpendicular to the line, then the line is tangent to the circle.